You know, people ask me all the time, Doc, if you could only have five herbs, what would those herbs be? And you know what? All five of them would be this one. Let's talk about it. So I'm Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine, and uh, I'm serious. This is probably the most important herb uh, that I've ever used, and this is cayenne pepper. And, and why do I say that? I mean, I have in my herbal quiver of, of tools, I have hundreds of herbs that I can use, right? But I can tell you that cayenne pepper, capsicum annuum, has saved more lives more dramatically in my hands and my experience than all of those other herbs combined. So I'm a, a, a veterinarian, been a veterinarian for over 30 years. And so um, I'm not just giving dog shots and spaying cats. I'm the emergency room for, for all those critters, right? And we're talking about animals that have been hit by cars. We're talking about animals that have gunshot wounds. We're talking about animals that are bleeding out that are in shock, that are this close to dead, right? And cayenne pepper for all those kinds of scenarios is the first thing that I reach for. Cayenne pepper um, is a premier crisis herb. It really is extraordinarily effective at bringing that, that animal back. Uh, you know, you can have a dog whose, you know, gums are white, his eyes are rolling back in his head, He's talking to the big dog at the end of the tunnel about his life, you know, and uh, you squirt a little cayenne pepper in their mouth and they're back right now. I mean, their gums are pink, their eyes are bright. They want to know what the heck happened <laughs> because a little cayenne pepper in your mouth is a big experience. Uh, and so for shock cases, it's extraordinary. Uh, I've used it on animals that are having anesthetic reactions. You know, they're, they're not waking up or they're crashing under anesthesia little cayenne pepper, boom, they're back. I've used it on C-section puppies that don't want to breathe. You know, um, very common when you're doing a C-section uh, that that little puppy comes out and he's never breathed before, number one. And number two, he's still full of anesthetic from what I gave mom to knock her out and he ain't gonna breathe. And a little cayenne pepper on those little tongues, man, and those little guys are awake and wanna know what the heck's going on and and uh, would I mind terribly putting them back where it was nice, right? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, for shock, uh, it's astounding. It also has good applications for bleeding. It can be used internally for bleeding at the same time you're using it for shock, right? Most of those cases are bleeding cases anyway. Um, but I've, you can also use it topically for, for bleeding. I've never once given a lecture uh, where I mentioned cayenne where some member of the audience didn't come up and tell me a story about how they'd whacked their finger open with a kitchen knife and put cayenne pepper on it and stopped the bleeding instantly. Interestingly, they also always report that it didn't, it stopped the pain from that cut. Well, how's it doing that? Well, cayenne also has some powerful benefits for pain management. Um, it's pretty zingy uh, when you put it on that cut. It's not a deal breaker, but you're knowing something's happening. But within not long at all, that zing is gone and the pain from the cut is gone. Because what's happening is that cayenne pepper is interfering with nerve transmission of pain. And it does that in several ways. One way is that it, it binds with a, a receptor. It's a villanoid receptor. It's called VR1, or I think they also call it TRPV1 or something. Anyway, uh, it binds with that receptor and makes it so that it can't transmit the pain response to the brain. It also interferes with substance P, which is a neurotransmitter that uh, modulates pain transmission to the brain. And so it really is shutting down and desensitizing those nerves and saying, look, guys, we're not going to talk about this. There's nothing to see here, right? Uh, it also has anti-inflammatory properties. So all three of those things are great. As if that weren't enough, it improves circulation, which flushes out prostaglandins and all the other chemicals that cause pain and inflammation. They're getting moved along and, and excreted through the kidneys and the liver. And so that decreases pain. You can use it topically as a lotion for arthritis cases uh, not only because of the chemistry with the neurotransmitters and the nerve desensitization, it helps with that to cause arthritis pain to feel better, but it also 
because of the uh, increased circulation. It, it's what they call a rubefacient. Uh, rubefacient's the funky herbalist word for an herb that improves circulation. It reddens it, right? Rube, red, facere, to make. So we're making it red, you know? It's, in, it's increasing circulation of those joints, which, like I said, flushes out all the chemical mediators that are causing the inflammation in the first place. So um, really a great herb for pain, but it does so many other things. I mean, it's a phenomenal expectorant. It's great for clearing your sinuses. I've used it on sore throats. It kills the bugs and stops the pain. Uh, I've used it on hypertension, high blood pressure cases. Uh, can have some real benefits there. We just finished and are uploading a fantastic, uh, mind-boggling uh, lesson on blood pressure and hypertension in the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. My wife wrote it, who's a naturopath. I read that and I thought, wow, I should retire and let her do it. Because <laughs> it's really, really amazing. Uh, so, and cayenne's part of that. Um, it's also good for stomach ulcers. I mean, it, it's good for so many other things. We're not even going to get into it. We're not going to do a two-hour YouTube video for you on cayenne because you'll fall asleep. It really is an astounding herb, particularly for emergency life-saving situations. One of my favorite plants, cayenne pepper, capsicum annuum. If you'd like to learn more about uh, medicinal plants, if you'd like to really get in deep uh, with somebody that doesn't just teach you how to make a bedtime tea or how to make a nice lotion for your dermatitis, but somebody that can teach you what to do about a gunshot wound, what to do about a shock case, uh, what to do about really in the trenches herbal medicine that might be really handy someday, uh, come have a look at the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. We'd love to join you. I'm Dr. Patrick Jones. Click the little like button if you like it. Click the little subscribe button. If you see any other buttons you like, you can click those too. Have a great day. Thanks for listening.